Um, Tim Weigel, New York State IPM program, uh, grape and hop specialist, uh, team leader with the Lake Erie Regional Grape Program. Here today with uh, Andy Musa, who's Penn State Extension. He's also on the Lurk team, and you know, want to talk a little bit about what we're seeing out in the vineyards um, this time of year. And Andy, I know you get out in the vineyards each week. Um, for those of you that are members of the Lake Erie program and get our weekly electronic newsletter, you see that Andy has in the vineyards where he's giving photos of the different pests that you see um, along with some descriptions. And so, you know, what have you been seeing lately as far as some of the insect pests? At this time in the season, uh, and when is this time in the season? I just, you know, it's, uh, it's midsummer. It's uh, the end of July, and usually at this time, the insects that we see are grape leaf hopper and Japanese beetle. Uh, those are the two pests now, and they're what we call indirect pests. They don't directly feed on the fruit, but they feed on the leaves. So we're starting to pick up um, uh, both grape leaf hopper and uh, Japanese beetle. Okay, so I mean, are they a concern? You say they're secondary indirect pests, mm -hmm. who cares? Well, again, they can be, but you have to look at uh, each individual situation and each individual block. So uh, generally with insects, uh, they're uh, temperature driven. So uh, up to a point, you know, they, they like the warmer temperatures. So the warmer it is, the faster their development is. So you have to look at, um, you know, what the population levels are, you have to look at, again, um, variety-wise. Uh, and, again, we've mentioned in past podcasts, uh, crop load. Right. So those, those are the things that I would look at uh, before you decide if you're going to have to uh, make an insecticide application or not. Yeah. Okay. So with Leafhopper, the research done by Tim Martinson years and years ago um, in Concord Vineyard found that unless we're in a overcrop situation and we have severe drought conditions, you really didn't have to worry about leafhopper. Um, so if you went out and did your crop estimation, found out that you're in a severe um, overcrop situation and you didn't thin, we're kind of going through a period of time now when we really haven't been getting the rain in the Lake Erie region. Um, is that something, Would when does it become a concern that maybe I'd better do something about Again, what I'm seeing in the vineyard uh, in the last couple of weeks is that there is a buildup of um, grape leafhopper, and especially as compared to last year. And I think there's hot, dry conditions. We were hot and dry last year. I expected more grape leafhopper, mm -hmm. but I didn't find them. But but uh, these last week or two, I've been picking up uh, more uh, grape leafhopper out there, both adults and nymphs, and it seems like it's earlier. So again, uh, Hopefully they did their crop estimation. Yeah. And again, if they have uh, figured out that they've got uh, a high crop load, um, that's one stress. The higher your crop load, the more stress their vines are going to be under. Another thing, it's been hot and dry. Um, so far, uh, we're not under any drought conditions, but that would be another consideration. Mm -hmm. uh, another stress on the vine. And then look at the population levels. If they have high populations of uh, leafhopper and you can actually see the leaf stippling, uh, and it's determined that it's moderate to severe, then, you know, that, that's when I would worry about it. And in the conditions like you mentioned, uh, you got a heavy crop load, um, possibly other stresses, high population levels, then it may benefit the grower to, to put an in insecticide application. So looking a little bit forward, um, we're coming up, um, looking at the new model for Great Berry Moth. Um, we're looking at, we're probably a week to two weeks away from a spray for berry moth. So if you need to spray for berry moth, most of the materials you use for berry moth would take care of the leaf hopper. You, so you could do double duty with that one spray. Could, waiting a week or two, would that be a problem, do you see? Grape leaf hopper is fairly easy to take care of when you apply an insecticide. So uh, I, would, I would time my insecticide spray if you need a berry moth spray around that, that's the most important. Right. And so if you had a delay, you know, a week or two for grape leaf hopper, then I think you'd be all right. So I would I would gear it towards the berry moth. And then if you put an application on for berry moth, uh, the majority of the materials that we're using um, will also take care of grape leaf hopper. Okay. And you mentioned Japanese beetle is another one that you're seeing out there. And, um, you know, 
How many generations a year does Japanese beetle have? Is it one of those things that once you get it, you have to worry about it the remainder of the year? Or? It, it's generally only, it, it's only in our region one generation per year, but they can live for maybe four weeks right. or longer. So those adults will continue to feed. Uh, there's a few things. They feed on over 300 different crops. Yes. So, and again, um, they'll be feeding on grapes, but you would look at variety again because um, they tend to prefer thinner leaf varieties. So your wine grapes a lot of times um, would be the preference. Mm -hmm. um, the thicker leaved, uh, hairier Harrier leaves of American varieties like Concord, they don't tend to prefer as much and um, they don't do quite as much feeding. A lot of times, I think growers visually, um, that injury will look a lot worse than it is. Right. So um, I, I think a grower has to consider that, take those factors into consideration as to, okay, what canopy size? I'm sure Concord Vineyard has a lot of leaves. And research has shown that, uh, especially Concord vines, can tolerate a lot of leaf injury. So, in that situation, I would look again, mentioning crop load, you know, what stresses are on the vine. You've got a lot of leaves, so there have to be a lot of Japanese beetle injury, really, to, to justify a spray. The other thing, I think, is um, these Japanese beetles tend to congregate in the vineyard. So, you'll get into an area... And you'll see maybe a lot of Japanese beetles feeding on the leaves, and it might look bad. But if you continue your scouting in other parts of the vineyard, frequently what I find is that, you know, you get to other parts of the vineyard and there's really very little feeding. So it's usually not that extensive feeding throughout a vineyard block. Because usually um, the larvae where the, the sea grubs, Japanese beetle spends most of its time underground feeding on grass roots. And so a lot of times what we'll see is that they'll actually be coming into a vineyard from outside so, because um, we get a lot of questions about, well, can I treat my vineyard, the um, grass, grass in the vineyard? And I think what we see is that doesn't work just because, especially if you have grass around your vineyard, that they're coming in from outside. And the other thing is, you know, they're, they're strong flyers. Right. So they, you know, it's, it's. You know, not like maybe a berry moth that, uh, you know, isn't as good a flyer. They'll come in from long distances. So, you know, we don't, like you said, generally recommend treating, you know, the turf or whatever and, and expect that that's going to really reduce the populations in the vineyard. Yeah, because if you get one Japanese beetle that finds your vineyard and enjoys it, it has an aggregation pheromone it can release, and that's where it's bringing them in from miles. Yeah. Yeah. And that's where they'll come so. leaf, uh, they'll feed on the leaves and they'll mate. And, and that's why, like, you know, we mentioned before, you'll find them in pockets in right. a vineyard rather than, than extensively throughout a vineyard feeding. So don't go out and buy the uh, Japanese beetle traps because you're <laughs> just going to be drying them in from miles around. It's a very strong pheromone so all right well i guess that wraps it up for this week and again if you have any comments or suggestions on future podcasts please leave it in the comment sections below mm -hmm.